Hi, this is Sandy Baird, a citizen activist, and I am here today to talk about a current local issue, reminding the audience, however, while we uh, act locally, we think globally, so we recognize that this housing situation that we're talking about is not only a housing situation here in Burlington, although it's a pressing problem here in Burlington, but it's also a problem that is occurring throughout the United States and also throughout the world. With us today is Bob Collins, who is a tenant at Decker Towers uh, and a resident there, and also Jim Rader, another concerned citizen who has friends who also live at Decker Towers and who wanted to talk about the current situation there uh, with us because, as I said, Jim is a friend of all of us, a friend of the people, and also a friend of the tenants, so he's very aware of all the problems that have been occurring at Decker Towers. Okay, so I'm going to turn this over to Bob Collins, who is the resident there, and talk a little bit about who he is, how he happens to live there, and what is the current situation. Okay, so Bob. Well, we have uh, 161 apartments, so there's a lot. Okay, of let me stop you there. So yeah. there's 161 residents, and where is? Well, at least more than that. More than that, but that's uh, how many apartments we have. Okay, but and where is this located? Decker Towers is on St. Paul Street in Burlington. A across from Carey's. Yep, right Quick across stop. from Carey's Quick Stop. Um, it's a, a baby blue building. Um, it's 11 stories, the largest build, the tallest building in Vermont. In Vermont. In Vermont. Wow, which we're is, which small always, change, right? Always surprises people yeah. because it's actually built in a river gully. So it's not like up on the hill. So people yeah. don't think of it as the tallest, but it is. It's our, our skyscraper, right? That's right. That's right. And well, it, isn't that going to be changed pretty it's soon? It's threatened with the mall, and there's another yeah. project downtown that's threatened it. But so far, I think we're holding. Um, uh, if that was all we needed to worry about, we'd be in good yeah, shape. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. Um, I moved there about 10 years ago. Okay, but when you say subsidized housing, some of our viewers probably don't know what that means. Yeah, well, um, I'm on disability. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I was on disability for health reasons before I, I, I lost my leg in my amputee. But I'm not there because of that. I had other health issues that qualified me for a disability. And because of that, I was eligible for subsidized housing, got on a wait list, and I uh, was offered a, an apartment at Decker Towers. Mm -hmm. so I moved in there about 10 years ago. When I moved in, you know, my thought is, this is great. Um, I'm a Burlingtonian. I love Burlington. I'm happy to spend the rest of my days here. Do you mind asking how old you are? Uh, 70 years old. Mm -hmm. Just turned 70 in May. And... Um, the building is, or at least it used to be. How many to, rooms do you have? Just one. It's an uh -huh. efficiency. Mm -hmm. I think it's about, if you looked at the total footprint, about 24 by 24, I would guess. Mm -hmm. So it's not huge, but it's plenty for me. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a handicap apartment. I uh, notice you're in a wheelchair. So does that mean that this is handicapped accessible? Yes. And what floor so. is it on? I'm on the eighth floor. Uh huh. Um, but I hope there, there are elevators. There are two elevators. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, we all feel that we could use at least three, mm -hmm. um, and the uh, elevators do break down down quite often. They're oh yeah, old. they're old. Yeah, is yeah. the whole building old, or what's the deal? The building probably... was built, I believe, in '71. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's an old building. Who uh, owns it? Um, I believe Burlington Housing Authority owns it. Um, as far as I know. And they probably <laughs> built it, do you think, or what? To... Boy, you got me there. I don't, I don't, have, know. I don't know all the details. How about you, Jim? You I don't know? know if it was built by the city or... You know, the relationship between the city of Burlington and the Burlington, Burlington Housing, Housing Authority is a little unclear to me right now. When I was uh, looking up um, BHA, uh, I'll call them, um, to check on this meeting, I had some trouble finding it, and when you really? go to the Burlington City site, it's not listed as one of the departments, uh, which surprised me. Um, so it must be somewhat semi-autonomous, but it is run uh, or overseen by a board of commissioners, I know that. That are appointed by the mayor. I'm appointed by the mayor and or the city council. I'm not sure whether the city council gets involved. Good or point. Not. I don't know. It's, it's but, not uh, a clear, to the public, it's a little confusing, I think. Yeah. Well, obviously, if you guys yeah. are experts in the situation, can't find it, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm not clear. I would, I would guess it gets federal funds. Oh, it does, yes. Yeah, right, okay. Yeah. 
Connected and, with HUD in some way, I believe. And uh, to answer uh, further your question about subsidy, uh, subsidized housing, my understanding, and Bob, you can correct me if this is not right, is that at least most people who live in these subsidized uh, public housing uh, buildings, units, um, their rent is fixed at no more than 30%, I believe, of their income. Uh-huh. There's a formula so, for it. 30%. Yeah. yeah. Well, so, which is, right. So that's the subsidy. That mm -hmm. they, they are paying less than the market rate. rate. Yeah. Oh, it's way below market rate. What you pay is below. Oh, yes. Yeah, right, right. Yes. Which way, is way, good. Below, way below market rate. I couldn't, I couldn't afford to live in Burlington. I don't know who can. matter of fact, can. I'd be homeless if I didn't have their assistance, so. Yeah. Um, I think and that's increasingly the case for a lot of people right. all across the country. Right. No but question. I, but I understand that Burlington has a especially high rate of homeless people. I think so, and I'm not an expert on that area, but um, I believe it's because a lot of it is because we have such excellent human services. Do we? I think so. Uh, when you look around the country, I think Burlington and Vermont has pretty good services. I think Burlington has a reputation for being a place that's relatively um, uh, friendly to um, homeless and uh, people with you know, pro issues. Okay, well, let's get to that in a minute. Okay. Uh, first of all, so you've lived there for a long time. You've enjoyed it. You plan to stay Up there. Until a couple of years ago, I did. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay, so that's really what we're here to talk about. There's, it has been reported also uh, in the press, I believe, that Decker Towers, maybe with other housing projects, Increasingly, are under you know uh, problems. Has a lot of problems. So, could you describe why it is that it has come to your attention that there are problems and right and well, so forth? We have um, problems in our building and mostly around the issue of safety. Mm -hmm. um, there is a drug problem and a homeless problem well, in Burlington in general yeah, in right. the country. Right. I mean, um, in in Vermont, in Burlington, no question about it. And that's the first thing you'll hear if you talk to Steve Murray, who's the director of the Burlington Housing Authority, mm -hmm. is that it's everywhere. We're yeah. doing the best we can, et cetera. But I believe from my observation, and again, I'm not an expert, that Burlington, uh, the Decker Towers has really become a, a hub in Burlington. Why? Uh, because it's easy access. For some reason, our security system has not been um, but, enforced. Okay. Okay, let's go back. When you say it's a hub, do you mean it's because it's downtown or what? Uh, bec partly because of the location. There's mm -hmm. no doubt about that. It's mm -hmm. centrally located. It's close to City Hall Park, mm -hmm. which is another, yeah, as you know, we have observed um, uh, a lot of activity there. Um, anybody who's at Decker Towers is not at the same time at City Hall Park. Um, People have been coming and going at Decker Towers freely, and I mean non-residents, homeless people, people who are there to buy drugs. We have a handful of residents that are selling drugs. Within the building? Within the building. People who have leases, who live there, who have apartments, and they're selling drugs, and most of them are in the process of being evicted for non-payment of rent. Who are the like, drug sellers? Yep. They're not paying rent, you don't think? Uh, some of them are not paying rent, and they're being, um, uh, BHA is uh, evicting them for non-payment of rent. Um, uh, Steve has an explanation for that. I personally feel they should be evicted for selling drugs, which is a direct violation of their lease. It mm -hmm. immediately breaks their lease. And we have cameras all over the building, so it's not like we don't have, have it on camera. You do have it on the camera? They're coming and going. Uh -huh. um, they do drug deals right out in front of the building. They're not afraid that the police don't come half the time, more than half the time probably. And I know they're short-staffed and they have a prioritization of, you know, what they respond to, what they don't, don't have the resources for. Um, or, you know, the building managers, um, they're just not enforcing our security system. We have a call box. No guests are supposed to come, no non-residents are supposed to come into the building unless they're buzzed in by a resident or a resident comes down from their apartment and opens the locked door and lets them in. Right now what's happening is people are just following residents in. When you say people, 
Who? People who are not residents who are coming to buy drugs okay. or coming to sleep in the building. Uh -huh. They come and sleep in the stairways at night, in the laundry rooms, in other common areas. And Burlington Housing Authority, their response to that is instead of uh, addressing security at the front door and keeping them out of the building, they're locking down the laundry rooms, they're locking down our library, they're locking down our observatory on the 11th floor so that after hours we don't have access to those um, common areas. Um, so okay, so but you're, you're talking about security. Okay, so let's go back to that. Is there a front door? Yep, there's a main entrance right on St. Paul Street and it has a vestibule where you come in. Anybody can open that front first door. Then you're in kind of a, a foyer. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's a call box on the wall, which currently only works one way um, as far as being um, voices being understood. So it's broken. Um, but even when it works, it's, I felt it was not user friendly. Um, but, uh, you know, people are, uh, before we just got new door locks, before that, people were just yanking the door and basically breaking in. Uh huh. Breaking. Uh, breaking the magnetic lock. In mm -hmm. other words, breaking the lock open, the door open, and coming in um, if they didn't have the patience to wait. And, you know, it's just like the drug dealers are coming and going freely. And I've heard a rumor that there's a drug dealer who's living in an empty apartment right now, and the person who's supposed to be there is moving around to different apartments. It's not a secret, and nothing's being done about it. And so I don't have the answers to that because I'm not a management person, but it's not good. People are afraid. They're hiding in their apartments, afraid to come out. We have well, what happens if, what happens, uh, is there violence? Is, that's there has a, been some violence, yes. What kind? It, um, a uh, few residents have been hit by um, people coming in. Uh, there was one woman that was hit. I wasn't there. Um, she wasn't seriously injured, but she basically said to a person that was trying to follow her in, no, you can't come in, and he hit her. Uh, this is all hearsay, mm -hmm. but this is what I heard. I've heard it from several people. Um, we have a, they'll steal from you, they come in with... What, what do you mean they steal from you, from your person? Sure, they, people, uh, residents have been have sitting been, like, out robbed? front. robbed? Yep, there was a gentleman that was sitting out front with a walker, and somebody reached in and grabbed his wallet right right there, right in front of him, just took off with it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, people have been Happened to me the other day. I'm not surprised. Mm -hmm. People have been threatened with weapons by the drug dealers and the, with the, weapons. Yes, knives. Have you personally and guns. seen weapons? Um, no. But you have had reports. Yeah, many. Uh huh. Yeah, from other residents, and and I've been threatened three times uh, by a drug dealer that lives on my floor. Subtle threats, you know. Not, what, what, well, like what? Oh, it's hard to describe. Just like, uh, where do we get you when you're alone or something like that. Why? What, what did they see in well, you? Well, the person that I'm talking about it doesn't like the fact that I know that he knows that I know that he's a drug dealer. So. Mm-hmm. And, um, and he tried to get in the building once without he forgot his, his card or most likely he had given it to somebody else. And I wouldn't let him in and he was angry and he yanked the door and busted it open and came in. Uh, he probably holds a grudge for that. I don't know. I haven't talked, I don't talk to him. That's I'd like idea. to add here, um, I'm a frequent visitor to the building uh, in addition to Bob. Because? Why? Uh, two, two friends, including Bob and mm -hmm. including my friend French, who lives there. Um, so I, I visit pretty much weekly. And I've observed some of these problems. I certainly have not been affected in any way like what Bob is uh, describing. But I've heard a lot of reports of what's going on there. And I just want to emphasize, I think it's not only safety, which is a big thing. I mean, people really afraid, afraid for their lives. But it also degrades the quality yes, of life of for everyone mm -hmm. who's there. It has, big time. And uh, that, that I have observed and uh, seen some of the effects of. And it, it uh, is not the kind of thing that uh, residents of a building should have to uh, endure. Should endure. Uh, Jim, you were a former assistant to Mayor Sanders, is that right? Uh, I never had that title. But I was city clerk of Burlington for yeah. 11 years. And so, I worked in his congressional office, yeah. Right, so you've seen big changes, right? In I would Burlington? say so, I would say so. Uh-huh, yeah. well so have I, I'm, I'm a citizen, I've been here since 1968, but boy, there That's have been. That's when I moved here. 
What? That's when I moved here in 68. Well, I came in 68, and yeah. um, it was kind of a sleepy town, a oh, sleepy little town, was, uh, yeah. right? Yeah, I wish it not was. That, not that I love sleepy little towns, because no, I like cities, but... It was still a college town. Then. Yeah, it was, right. It was a lot going on. Exactly. And, and I, there wasn't much crime. No. And, and honestly, no. The, the thing that is so shocking to me is there were no homeless. There was one person that I right. knew of that was homeless, and it's because he really drank too much. Right. Um, but I, honestly... It certainly he, wasn't the way it is no, now. But, and can you imagine a life anymore in a city without the homeless? No. Because I was re recently in Pittsfield, Mass., Homeless. That's, that's where I'm originally. That's where I was born. Oh, really? I was yeah. born and brought up in Springfield. Yeah, well, Pittsfield yes. was a GE town. Yes, and Springfield was, of course, Indian motorcycle and guns. Right. Yeah, it was a lot interesting, yeah. However, yeah. both towns were really working class towns. Yep, very much so. And people all had jobs, and there was virtually no homeless that I ever knew about. I know. Really, until quite recently. Isn't that true? I, th I don't know how recently, um, but you're right about that. Um, it was very different back then. Um, when Jim was city clerk, I was at Burlington Electric. That's how I originally, that's where I first met Jim, just by going to City Hall. Um, and then we re-met at the YMCA in swimming. But um, I was working at Burlington Electric when Bernie was mayor, and back then it was, the city was very different. Yeah, there were problems, but nothing like that. Nothing no. like this, and uh, you could pretty much walk anywhere. You know, North Street might be a little sketchy late at night, but probably only if you were a woman. Right, Burlington exactly. Burlington was really pretty safe to walk yeah, anywhere, and exactly. now it's, like, totally different. In uh, terms but, of homelessness, I... Yeah, what happened? Go I ahead. marked the change uh, just around 1980. Um, I was a counselor at the uh, Vietnam Veterans Center before I came to City Hall, and I had got involved with a group that was trying to start a shelter at that time. And what was the group? Um, it was a group led by uh, Reverend Ely, Gary mm -hmm. Ely, mm -hmm. and um, we or they started a small shelter on Lower Main Street that I think had a capacity of maybe seven people. Mm -hmm. And that seemed to pretty much uh, meet the need at that point. But within a year, uh, the uh, numbers just skyrocketed. And 80? So it started? Uh, 80, 81. Mm -hmm. uh, the mayor's office, uh, Mayor Sanders, began to hear from a lot of community leaders about people coming, wanting to sleep in the, in the churches. And it just had become a very visible and very... Um, uh, imp impactful problem, mm -hmm. and so that's when uh, um, the mayor asked me to call a meeting, which I did, and and that's uh, eventually led to cots. To cots. Yes. Uh huh. Which is well, the community on temporary shelter. Committee on temporary shelter. Uh, we first, I won't be great on dates here, but I think our first winner was '82. Okay, so who was president then, Reagan? It was just when, Carter too. It was just when Reagan came into office. Uh huh. And I believe a, a significant factor. Well, we're kind of getting, perhaps, off the subject here, but a significant factor was the uh, cutting of funds for HUD and for housing programs. Um, yeah. What I just try to emphasize at, at Decker Towers is that. It, well, the problem that we have would be a, a significant problem anywhere at any. Yes, building. exactly. However. Mm -hmm. Decker Towers is a building that is full of our most vulnerable citizens. They're elderly, disabled, many health problems, many, many health problems. And we just we are not, it's not a building full of people that can um, stand up and deal with this. Or self-help. Yes, exactly, right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when we had a meeting the other day, and uh, I think there might have been 20 or 30 people there out of a building of 161 apartments. And so, you know, there's a lot of people that are afraid. They don't, they don't, they're just hiding in their apartment waiting for it to get better. It's not gonna. And, and that's not gonna happen, I no. don't think. And so we've gotten some, act, some positive things are being done. I think it's a reaction to the pressure and uh, of course they'll deny this, but I think it's a reaction to the pressure that uh, Decker Tower is putting on and that the general public awareness is putting on uh, the administration of Burlington Housing Authority to fix the problem.
You know, they're, it's right in their literature, and it's in the lease. They're supposed to provide safe housing for us, and it's not safe. Okay, let me let me go back uh, and w for one point that Jim made. Yes, I believe in the 80s that homelessness became a problem because programs were defunded. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you the critical program. I was in the legislature in the 90s, but the, the most critical problem I saw was the cutting of welfare assistance to mothers, mm -hmm. and they're largely to mothers or to single parents who had kids, and welfare was cut. That was cut, though, under the Clinton era, not not the Republicans, and, and, uh, and it was a big mistake, because what, what I see every day are women and children who are very, basically homeless or are in very safe, unsafe conditions, okay? But that was, that's one problem, which I believe that Reagan exasperated and then the Clintons did after that, okay? Uh -huh. But that was a real problem of the homeless. At that point, I don't think it was also addiction that much, was it? No, I think addiction and that, is... And that yeah. seems to have skyrocketed... I agree. ...after the 90s. I mean, do you think so or not? Well, recently, I think. And, and I, that's what I don't understand, is, is this incredible level of addiction, which I see every day, because I go past City Hall every day. These people, the people who are abusers of drugs, I don't... I have some sympathy for them. But that is even a different problem than people who simply can't afford rent, isn't it? It's very different. And, and I, you know, I, as I point out in one of the uh, postings I put up on our bulletin board, I have great compassion I do too. for the people who are homeless and people who have drug problems. And, however, they don't belong at Decker Towers. You know, they just don't. Well, they because can't. Because we can't, Can we they? can't deal yeah, right. with them. Right. They shouldn't be able to... First of all, tenants who are selling drugs should be evicted, and it shouldn't take a year to evict them. But it does. Well, if it does, then, you know, there's a, pro there's a problem with the system, because that's a year that they're terrorizing uh, 161 <coughs> apartments right. and bringing people in the building th that might hurt or, and or kill someone. Yeah. And um, the other thing is that the people who are trying to get into the building to buy drugs, if they couldn't get into the building, the dealers would have to go out and sell to them off property. At least that would give us some of our safety back. Mm -hmm. Drug dealers need a place to live. They, they have do. to have an apartment. The landlords and the mayor just pulled two issues out of a resolution that was going to be sent uh, to the city council concerning um, uh, the problems with uh, homeless and, and drug addicts. And it was to hold the, the drug dealers more responsible and to hold the landlords who knew they had tenants that were dealing drugs more responsible. Hold them responsible. Okay. Which I think are two excellent points to it. If you can figure out how to do it constitutionally. Um, well, that's, they, they have more rights than we do. It feels like that, okay? Well. The, the people that are coming into the building and basically terrorizing us in our own home. This is not just an apartment building for us. This is our last home. Right. Where most people are going to live there until they die. And all we want is to have a safe place to live, and we don't have that. And I don't think, I think we can have that. Uh, I think it's being mismanaged. Okay. I want to address that in a minute, but Jim, were you going to say something? Well, I just, I don't know how much time we have left, about but 10 minutes. I want to make sure that uh, people know about a meeting yeah. coming up of the uh, Board of Commissioners of the Bo Burlington Housing Authority. I think there's a slide... Uh, probably being uh, put up now. Um, and I'd like to urge as many people as care about this issue and are concerned about the safety and the quality of life of people at Decker Towers and actually other places around the city. I'm sure other uh, BHA... Um, and other agencies. Yeah. But normal uh, neighborhoods. Right. Yeah, I mean... I live on Luma Street. I mean, there's reports all the time of car break-ins, of, of uh, home drug invasions. No, who, I know it. Who come to Decker Towers exactly. who need money to come to Decker Towers. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know what the solution or solutions are that uh, are going to effectively address this issue, but I think that people who are concerned need to step up and get involved. And this meeting of the Burlington, Burlington Housing Authority uh, on the 26th, Tuesday the 26th. At 9.30? It is at 9 in the morning, I believe, um, which is not the greatest time. But uh, Where is it? 
uh, at, again, it should be on the, uh, the slide, I believe it's 101 College Street. It's uh, another facility mm -hmm. of uh, Burlington Housing Authority. Okay, so September 26th, 9.30 Tuesday, at September. 101 College, College correct? Street, right. Okay, so we can all go and hear at least what the problem is and possible solutions. I do want, as a lawyer, because I'm a lawyer, to say something to you, though. Because mm -hmm. I go to the mayor's meetings um, sometimes, and I'm going to try a lot more to go at, uh, morning. at 8 o'clock at the Bagel Bakery. Right. And every city, all, all the citizens there are concerned about this problem because it's Decker Towers is key. I'm not going to minimize that. But it's every single neighborhood is it. also concerned about drug addiction and home invasions and burglaries and so forth. I just want to say, when you say that they should be evicted, I'm an attorney. So I do know there, and I'm not saying whether I agree with it or not. I'm just saying the legal process for eviction is very long, very okay. long. And that was put in place to protect tenants so that landlords couldn't boot you out at any moment. Right. Um, I appreciate that. Well, I do, too. I've been a tenant myself. However... It also has stymied, in other words, the courts to do really anything about it. The other option, of course, that you're talking about is the police, um, which I agree, but, but police also are constrained by something called the U.S. Constitution. And so some of these things you're talking about seem insoluble through the courts. And I'm really sorry about that. I, but I'm really sorry about that from the bottom of my heart because I have to deal with the courts. I, I understand that. You know, I mean, um, from our point of view, and I, you're right, I understand uh, the legalities and the constraints. Um, as a resident, I'm not going to speak for all the residents, but I'm guessing a lot of them feel the way I do. Yeah. When, you, when you're in your home and you're watching, and it's supposed to be secure, with the keypad and the locked doors and the entrance is supposed to be controlled. And uh, people are constantly, constant flow of people off the street coming to buy drugs, walking right into your living room, basically. Mm -hmm. Okay? And, you know, around the building, seeing if there's anything they can steal, et cetera. Knocking on your door because they got the wrong door when the drug dealer is down the other end of the building. You know, um, it's very easy to tell them, okay, you want the other end of the building, you know, because you know it can tell what they're there for. Because sometimes they knock on the doors at 3 in the morning. I know, yeah. I can hear the stairway door all night long. They come up the stairs, so, because there aren't any cameras in the stairway. Mm. But so back, they, and they know that. Of course they know that. They sleep in the stairways, a lot of them. So, I, you know, I understand the constraints, but I find it hard to believe uh, that something can't be done. To at least well, one problem. thing is being done, as Jim mentions, there is going to be a meeting on the 26th, correct, at 9 o'clock at 101 College Street. And I'll tell you, it's a huge local concern. The only answer, I think, is um, organizing tenants, is having tenants and residents organize, 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 and make right. something <clears throat> happen, okay? We're going to get those tenants that are terrorized out of their apartments to organize. That's where we're stuck. Well, we'll do everything we can regular, to help, right, yeah, Jim? It was a, that's why we need help from outside. Yeah, well, that's what we're here for. Right, and I appreciate that. I appreciate the attention on the problem because um, the tenants are n probably not going to solve it because we don't have enough. In a building our size, if we can get enough people to band together and be organized, we can literally uh, probably dr dr do it ourselves, drive them out of the building just by... Our, our presence. Okay, but so we don't have the people. That's why we need but, help from outside. But you might on the 26th, there right? We go. We're going to have some hope. Okay, I think we're out of time for the day, but we'll be back, I'm sure. And I want to thank you, Bob, for being so forthright, and Jim also, who's been with the people of this city for a very long time. Uh, and we'll be back in a month or so, or sooner, if we have some well, solutions. Right. Thank you both for your yeah, for your interest you. and your efforts. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Sandy. Yeah.